Hello friends, this video on human reproduction part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about embryonic development. How the embryo develops inside. Now, what happens once the implantation is done? As I said just now, so once the implantation is done, a connection develops between the embryo and the mother because the embryo needs nutrition in order to grow. For example, when you, if, you ha if, when, if you have a small kid in your house, that kid needs a lot of uh, nutritious stuff to grow to grow his height, to grow in uh, weight, etc. He needs a lot of nutritious stuff and that is why he is given a healthy diet, right? But in case of this embryo, this also needs to grow. For that, this also needs nutrition. But who will supply nutrition to the embryo? So a connection is established between the embryo and the mother's body so that the nutrients will come automatically from the mother's body. And this is the reason why pregnant women are always advised to have a good diet because the kind of diet which they are taking the kind of food which they are taking a part of it is actually going to the embryo so a part of it is actually consumed by the embryo for its growth so a very good diet is extremely important for a pregnant woman okay so for this in order to establish this connection between the mother and the embryo placenta formation take place now this is a new term again so what is placenta so let us understand this so placenta is the structural and functional link between the mother and the fetus. What is fetus? Fetus is the term which is used for the uh, developing embryo. Right? Initially we use the term zygote, then the zygote develops into an embryo and then the embryo gradually becomes a fetus, then the fetus becomes a baby. So that uh, these are different terms used for the same thing. Now, placenta acts as a structural link because physically that um, structure connects the baby with the mother. So that is why it is structural link. Why it is functional link? Because due to the presence of this link, the nutri nutrients are transferred from the mother's body to the uh, baby's body. So it is actually give, working functionally to provide nutrition to the baby. So that is how it is a functional link between the mother and the fetus. So let us, now the question is, how exactly the embryo will develop after the implantation? So how this placenta will be formed and even after the placenta is formed, how exactly, what are the stages through which the inner mass of cells undergo so that it develops into a small baby? So let us have a quick look at that. So first let us try to understand how placenta formation takes place, how placenta is formed. Now the placenta is formed in 8 to 9 days. So the formation of placenta itself will take this much of time. So it, it doesn't happen I mean, just at the spur of a moment. It takes time. So some 8 to 9 days will take for the formation of placenta. So let us see what exactly is placenta and how is it formed. Now the placenta structure is composed of two components. What are the two components? The fetal placenta and the maternal placenta. So a part of the placenta will be formed from the fetal body and a part of the placenta will be formed from the mother's body. And these two components will join together to form what is called placenta. Now let us see what is fetal placenta and what is maternal placenta. Now, fetal placenta is formed from trophoblast of blastocyst. You remember this was the blastocyst and the outer layer of blastocyst was trophoblast. So, that outer layer which actually attaches to the endometrium. So, that same layer will give rise to fetal placenta. So, some of the cells of the trophoblast will form the fetal placenta. Now, what about the maternal placenta? So the maternal placenta will be formed from the mother's body. Now let us see how exactly it forms. So after this stage, if you see, there are some hair-like outgrowth which are seen on the outermost layer or on the trophoblast. So these finger-like projections which appear on the trophoblast, they are called chorionic villi. So these structures are called chorionic villi and they are present on the outermost surface of the trophoblast. So this is how the fetal placenta is being formed. Now this will combine with the uterine tissue that is the tissues present on the uh, walls of the uterus. So uterus is a part of the mother's body right. So the uterine tissue is uh, contributing for the maternal placenta. 
right so this chorionic villi will combine with the uterine tissue to form the placenta so for from on behalf of the fetal placenta you have the chorionic villi which are present on the outermost which are present as in the form of projections on the trophoblast and on behalf of the maternal placenta you have the uterine tissue that that is the tissues which are present on the wall of the uterus now both of these will combine together to form the structure called placenta so the maternal placenta develops from the uterine tissue as i said so this is how placenta will be formed now let us see how the placenta will look like so this is how placenta will look like so you see this is the outermost uh, uh, villi or the chorionic villi which is seen and these here I mean, this this entire thing is the uterus if you can see right so here this is the fetus or this is the fetus or the embryo whatever you call it so you see the inner mass of cell is gradually developing into a uh, small baby so now you can actually see a rough sketch of a baby so this baby is connected by this rod like structures to the mother's uterus so this structure here is the placenta and this rod like structure which connects the baby's abdomen to the placenta is known as the umbilical cord so this is another important term which you should know so this placenta and umbilical cord keeps the baby always connected to the mother and through this all the nutrients come inside the fetal body so this was about the placenta formation so now let us look at the role of placenta so see in this picture it will be more clear to you now it is like a, at a later stage when the baby is quite developed but still here you can see this cord which you see that is the umbilical cord so this cord starts from the uh, abdomen of the fetus and it connects to the placenta and this structure is the placenta which is formed from the wall of the uterus so what is the role of placenta it okay before that let's as i said the umbilical cord so it is nothing but a navel string it arises from the fetus abdomen and connects to the placenta so here you can see the cord and this cord is the umbilical cord right now what is the, what are the important uh, roles or important functions of placenta so one important thing is that it helps to provide nutrients to the fetus from the mother's body but there are other functions as well so first thing as i said nutrients come into fetus from mother's blood so it will carry all the good things into the fetus from mother's blood it will also take away all the wastes from the fetus into the mother's blood because this baby is now all caged inside the uterus right so the mother can excrete out the waste products through the through her excretory system so what happens is all the wastes inside the fetus will be sent to the mother's blood through the placenta and then the mother's blood will actually do the job of excretion so the excretory system will take care of all those wastes exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide so the fetus needs oxygen so oxygen will come in through the placenta carbon dioxide is not required so carbon dioxide will go out through the placenta so all the things which is to be taken in or given out that will happen via placenta placenta will, or this structure will also help in the production of several hormones like human chorionic gonadotropin that is hcg human placental lactogen that is hpl estrogen and progesterone now this estrogen and progesterone you have seen that they were being produced before also progesterone was mostly produced by the corpus luteum but and they were like they actually control a lot of female sexual characters but the hormones like hct and hpl they are exclusively produced in a women only during pregnancy otherwise these hormones are not produced so they are produced only due to the formation of this placenta now also it has been observed that in a pregnant woman the levels of the hormones like estrogen thyroxine or progesterone they i mean increase a lot when compared to a normal female and this is to support the fetal growth because when a woman is pregnant she needs to take care of of the proper growth of the fetus as well so all the internal hormonal balance changes in order to 
accommodate this new change inside the body so all these these are the special hormones which are being produced in a woman exclusively during pregnancy so the placenta also plays a very important role in the secretion of these hormones so now let us look at the various stages of the embryo development how that one single cell zygote gives rise i mean actually form a baby inside the uterus so let us look at the various stages of the embryo development so what are the stages it go it passes through so it starts the story starts from the same old zygote the single cell a diploid cell so from the zygote it forms the blastomeres which were which are formed as a result of repeated mitotic division the two cell four st cell eight cell stages from there it forms the morula which in itself contains a lot of blastomeres from there it forms the blastocyst as you can see here this kind of a structure from there it gets implanted so here you see if it it got it gets implant the implantation happens so it attaches itself to the endometrium so what happens here attachment to endometrium so that is how it connects or it gets linked to the gets fixed to the uterus then what happens then the cells which are present there they start differentiating to form different layers of cells so so there are three layers of cells are formed ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm so so the ectoderm is the outer layer of cells endoderm the inner layer of cells and mesoderm is the middle layer of cells so these three layers of cells develop and from these three layers all other tissues develop from the tissues develops the organs from the organs develop the organ system now the inner cell mass that is the inner layer also contains some special cells known as the stem cells and what is the speciality about the stem cells these stem cells have the capability to give rise to all the tissues and organs of the body that is why these days uh, a new technique have come up that when a female is pregnant the there is an option in the uh, hospitals that you can actually preserve your stem cells so if you preserve your stem cells you are actually preserving a cell which is capable of giving rise to all the tissues all the organs all the organ systems of the of your baby because that stem cells will have those capability and it is possible to preserve those stem cells so the, the innermost layer of cells contain these stem cells and from these cells over a period of time with multi with repeated divisions all the tissues organs and organ systems will develop and that is what is happening here so here if you see the different layers of cells they start dividing and organizing themselves and finally give rise to an uh, a fetus like this so after these the first organ that is formed in a baby is the heart and it is formed when the baby is just one month the baby is one month starting from the day the zygote was formed so when it is one month from the zygote formation the heart is formed so no other parts or organs of the body are formed but the heart is formed and the heart beat can actually be felt using a stethoscope and that is what the doctors check just to see okay if the heart is i mean functioning properly or not again when uh, it is yet another one month so around two months the limbs develop where you can actually see the legs and the hands and uh, those things and when it is three months the organ systems develop the digestive system can be seen the digestive tract similarly all other systems of the body also starts developing when it is 5 months the lesser important things like the hair on the head tends to develop also the baby starts moving so movements establish now how movements establish that happens due to the our uh, that happens because of the connective tissue the bones the muscles the movement all those things get activated when it is around 5 months again over one month when it is 6 months the body hair establishes the eyelids eyelashes these prominent things also tend to come up so here you can see the difference here it is just a shape which you can guess that it might be a baby later you see the limbs develop right you can actually see the head as a separate thing and later over a period of time when it is almost grown up you can actually see everything you can actually see that it is an entire baby inside 
And finally, when it is nine months, it is fully developed. So when it is fully developed, it is ready to come out. And that is when it is, I mean, the female gives birth to the baby. So this, this is how the development of the embryo takes place inside the female's body or inside the mother's body for nine months. And this nine months period when the uh, development takes place inside the mother's body is known as the gestation period. So this period of nine months is called gestation. So the gestation period is to, are those nine months when, where the development actually takes place inside the mother's body. So the nine months period is known as the gestation period. So let us have a quick look at the various stages of the embryo. So this is how it develops. It starts from the zygote. So here you can see the zygote, which is a single cell. Then it forms the two cell stage. Then it forms the four cell stage. Then the eight cell stage. Finally, it forms the morula. From there, it forms the blastocyst. So from here, it will start forming the blastocyst. And also, if you see that the inner layer of cells, they start dividing in a way like uh, they start segregating each other to form the ectoderm, endoderm and the mesoderm. So three layers of cells are formed which gradually here you can see the different layers of cells organize themselves in different ways to form structures like this which in turn forms the various organs. For example, in this fetus, you can actually see the digestive tract, you can see the heart, you can also, I mean, I mean, the limbs and all are not developed yet. But later, in two months or so, the limbs start getting developed. You can see the legs, the hands, and the head also becomes more prominent and gradually it develops into a baby. Now here I have not mentioned all the minute details of the embryonic development but just wanted to show you that how the changes gradually take place because sometimes it becomes very much unbelievable to think that just a single cell which was zygote gave, I mean it actually lead to the formation of a baby after nine months. So that is why I just wanted to show you that how the mitotic division, the formation of new cells, so three things played an important role here. One is the cell division by mitosis. So the number of cells kept on increasing. Next was the cell differentiation. That is group of cells differentiated to form specific tissues. And the third thing was the tissues forming organs and the organs forming the organ system. So these things together actually led to the development of the zygote into a baby. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.